Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the 21st century, gaming has become a profession. Despite having several genres, war-based games have distinguished themselves as a popular genre. We bet you guys love playing video games too. While playing games, you must have come across weapons and vehicles like artillery, tanks and rifles. All these gun-type weapons have a barrel which facilitates the propulsion of ammo out of the front end at a high velocity. For example, in this image, you can see the interior view of the barrel of a rainmetal 120mm tank gun, which has been used in German-built Leopard tanks. Do you guys know how these barrels are manufactured? Well, you will find the answer in this video. Before we start talking about the topic for today's session, let's first watch a short video clip. Are you guys wondering what was the clip about? Well, it was the video of the centrifugal casting process. In this session, we'll talk about the process of centrifugal casting, its advantages, disadvantages, and applications. Let's start with the basic concept behind centrifugal casting. In centrifugal casting, centrifugal force is generated due to the rotation of mold. This is done by pouring the molten metal into a mold cavity, which is rotating at a very high speed. Due to the centrifugal force acting on the molten metal, it is forced outwards from the rotational axis. This causes the molten metal to get stuck onto the walls of the mold and starts cooling down until it completely solidifies. High pressure is generated due to the centrifugal force. This pressure is instrumental for producing castings with thick walls. There are three types of centrifugal casting. They are true centrifugal casting, semi-centrifugal casting, and centrifuging. Let's talk about them in a bit more detail. In true centrifugal casting, the molten metal is poured into a rotating mold. The axis of this rotation can be horizontal as well as vertical. Steel, iron, or graphite are used for making the mold. A refractory coating can be provided to the mold for increasing the mold life. The surface of the mold can be shaped as per the requirements of the final casting. However, the inner surface of the mold is always cylindrical. As the molten metal is poured into the rotating mold, it gets stuck on the cylinder wall due to the action of the centrifugal force. The mold continues its rotation as the molten metal starts cooling down. Once the molten metal has cooled down and solidified, the rotation is stopped and casting is obtained. During this process, the lighter elements such as impurities and bubbles tend to accumulate on the inner surface of the castings. This can cause a variation in properties of casting throughout its thickness. To avoid this, the inner surface of the casting is machined or grinded, and hence a smooth casting with the required properties is obtained. Using this process, castings with good quality Dimensional accuracy and external surface can be obtained. However, centrifugal casting has its own disadvantages too. Just as we mentioned earlier, the inner diameter of the castings obtained using this process are inaccurate. For this reason, machining is required which makes this process time-consuming. This process requires high investments and skilled labor. Cylindrical parts with 3 mm to 3 m diameter and 16 m long can be manufactured using cylindrical casting. Using this casting process, hollow cylindrical parts such as pipes, gun barrels, bushings, engine cylinder liners, bearing rings, and lamp posts are manufactured. Now, let's talk about semi-centrifugal casting. This process is used to produce solid castings, and to produce hollow shapes, cores are required. In this process, a dispensable sand mold is usually employed. The mold is allowed to rotate at high speed, with the angle of rotation always being vertical. The molten metal is poured into the mold cavity through the pouring basin. Due to the forces generated by rotation, the molten metal fills the entire cavity. As the molten metal cools down and solidifies, the mold is destroyed and the final casting is obtained. Compared to true centrifugal casting, semi-centrifugal casting has higher chances of suffering from defects and porosity. In spite of that, this process is very good for manufacturing parts with rotational symmetry such as wheels, nozzles, etc. Now, let's move on to our final topic for today, which is centrifuging. Unlike in the previous two types, the axis of rotation in the centrifuging process do not coincide with the axis of the mold cavity. In this process, the mold is placed at a certain distance from the rotational axis. As the entire setup rotates, the molten metal is poured from the center as shown in this animation. This molten metal is then forced into the mold cavity due to the centrifugal forces caused by rotation. This process is also known as centrifuge casting. And in this process, the properties of the final casting varies with the distance from the axis of rotation. Now, it's time to bring this session to a halt. Today, we talked about the processes and types of centrifugal castings, their advantages, disadvantages, and applications. We'll cover more topics in our upcoming videos. This is Skill Link, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.